Namaste. You know, when people think of India they, and Hinduism and especially Gandhi and also Buddhism, uh, they think of Ahimsa. Ahimsa is a very common, popular aspect of India, which is sort of become internationalized. And they like to translate it as non-violence. I have some disagreements with this translation, serious ones. And I'm going to ask Dr. Das to also explain, to explain how ahimsa and non-violence are distinct. Non-violence. The use of peaceful means, not force, to bring about political or social change. So what do you think of this vis-a-vis -vis ahimsa? Well, I think every country has police force. Every country has army. Every country has prisons. So they are not just peaceful means. Everybody has, every country has got big budget for their army and making arsenals and bombs and what not. So these are not peaceful means. So where is the ahimsa according to this definition? So if you analyze the life, we see that life is based on ahimsa, violence. There is always some violence involved. In fact, in Bhagavatam, there is a verse like that. Ahasto sahasta nam apado chatuspadam mahato falgunam jivo jiva sajivnam That one living being is actually surviving on another living being. Those who do not have hand, they are the food for those who have hands. Mm. Right? Human beings are eating all kinds of things. Those who do not have feet, like grass, then they are eaten by chatuspadam, those who have four feet. And the weak is exploited by the strong. So this is what you see. So then dharma is brought into picture to control this, to regulate it. So dharma is a regulating principle for too much violence. You cannot eradicate it completely. So then violence has to be done to maintain the peace. And that's why we have police, we have army, and we have all types of systems for punishment. That is not peaceful means. Peaceful means will be just by talking or having a dialogue. You know. So violence has a role to play. And in fact, to maintain peace, you need some violence. So if somebody is unruly, somebody is a criminal, then how are you going to restrain that person? You, you have to take to some certain violence to restrain that. Sometimes you may you have to kill a person. There is a capital punishment. Or another neighboring country is attacking your country. And you are a very peaceful person. So what peaceful mean are you going to use now to restrain the army? And if you don't have an army, they will take over. And then they are going to do a big violence to you. So your peaceful mean will actually become the cause of violence. So sometimes the peaceful action may be a violence and a violent, violent act may be actually cause of peace. So you have to see what is the outcome. If somebody attacks my family and I am just peaceful, although I have the power to actually you know, restrain this criminal or even shoot, I have a gun, but I say, no, I want to be peaceful. So then what is going to do? That he is going to kill me and my whole family. So Mahatma Gandhi was asked this question once that suppose you are in a village and some criminals with weapons attack the village and they want to shoot and plunder and rape the women. So what are you going to do because you are a non-violent person? So Mahatma Gandhi's answer was I will come first in front of them and let them shoot me first. But that is not a solution. Okay, they will shoot you first and then they are going to do what they want to do. So how you have helped? So that is not what Krishna is teaching in Bhagavad Gita. That's the reason he's saying that you have to fight. People think that Krishna is a warmonger. Many times this question is asked to me that why Krishna is inspiring Arjuna to fight so much? and being He's not inspiring to fight or being violent. He knows that if this is not done, then these criminals who have plundered and taken all their kingdom, then no one is going to 
control them, then they'll go and do the same thing to the next kingdom. So it means that killing bin Laden is actually ahimsa, good for ahimsa, because if he's going to kill 10,000 people and we kill one person so that 10,000 lives are saved, that's good. Yeah, that's that, good. Actually, this question was once asked to a philosopher that if somebody would have killed Hitler. Yeah. It would have been good for him. So, perhaps. was it a violent act or was it an act of non-violence? Right. So, ahimsa means minimizing the violence right. rather than eliminating the violence. Eliminating violence is not possible. Not possible. So, if violence on, on level 1 violence will avoid level 10 violence, it's a good thing to have level 1 violence. Right. Because overall, you are minimizing violence. On the other hand, if you avoid this level 1 violence, and it explodes into very big violence, then you've actually committed huge violence. Yeah, you are becoming instrumental in that. Yes. And this is exactly what Krishna is teaching. Right. Which people don't understand. Right. Right. So, you take the example of Krishna and then take the example of Mahatma Gandhi. Right. So Mahatma Gandhi, all the respect to him and he was a very peaceful person and he was, you know, very austere and, you know, very devoted. But then he himself became an object of violence. Right. So, would we say that Gandhi translate, mistranslated ahimsa as non-violence and taught, what he was really teaching was non-violence but calling it ahimsa. Right. He was not really teaching the correct meaning of ahimsa. He was calling it ahimsa but he had digested this word ahimsa into non-violence and he was really talking about non-violence. Because ahimsa is not unconditional non-violence. It says that you commit violence where required to save even the bigger violence, to prevent the bigger violence. Right. So, you see the word, if you, even if you take the Sanskrit word, so ahimsa is, the word comes from himsa with a before it. Right. Which is called naya samas. It is a type of samas or compound where naya is used, which turns into a. So, ahimsa, so usually people think that it just gives the opposite meaning. That if you have violence, then it is non-violence. You have jnana means knowledge, ajnana means no knowledge. No, a has got six meanings. Right. And one of them is less or small. Right. The example is given like anudara kanya. Right. So, udara means belly. And anudara literally would mean, if you take the meaning of negation, means one who has no belly. Now, how if she is a girl, how is that she has no belly? Right. So, it means small, thin small waist. Yeah. yeah. So, we are minimizing himsa. Right. Now, that's one thing. That is ahimsa. Ahimsa. Second thing I want to discuss is, why limited to physical violence as an issue? Can we say himsa is a kind of uh, uh, something that is harming? It could be emotional harming. Yeah. Yes. It could be, so if you go and convert people away from their religion, and you put them into kind of a disconnect with their heritage, disconnect with their ancestors, disconnect with their sacred soil. Uh, in a sense, you've done himsa. Yeah, so Manusmriti actually says that there are three types of violence, himsa. Physical, verbal, and mental. And he actually says that the reaction of whatever type of violence you do, it will come at that level. If you do physical violence, you will get reaction at physical level. If you do verbal, you will get at verbal level. If you do at mental level, you will get violence at the reaction at the mental level. So, and sometimes mental is more powerful than physical. So, converting people on a large scale away from their heritage is mental this, violence. This is also violence. So, yeah. So, I think that's another uh, reason that uh, ahimsa should not be translated non-violence because it doesn't have to be physical. Uh, the word non-violence generally means physical kind of stuff. We're talking about even emotional, intellectual, verbal harm. So, it's more like harming. So, maybe ahimsa is more like minimization of harm rather than non-violence. Minimization right. of harm, various kinds of harm. Right. So, that could be at emotional level, physical level. So, you can do ahimsa just by your talk, right. by your words, you know. Right. Economic exploitation yes. causes, causes mental anguish. So, the person, you squeeze them off there. So, colonization is doing a lot of ahimsa. Well, this is a big violence. It's a huge violence on people's uh, quality of life and so on. So, uh, ahimsa is a powerful word. 
And you know, there are some people who don't like what Gandhi did. And so they're saying we reject Ahimsa. I don't want you to reject Ahimsa. I want you to reject the, defin the translation of Ahimsa as nonviolence. Yeah, we have to. Uh, ahimsa is a very important principle of dharma. Right. We don't reject that, but we have to understand the meaning behind it. Yes. So if a terrorist is coming with guns and he's about to start shooting around, uh, you have a chance to kill him. That's uh, actually Ahimsa. You are actually helping uh, minimize the harm by getting rid of one person and saving thousands of others. That, that is the only ahimsa in that situation. Right. If you don't take that action, then you are doing ahimsa along with him. Very good. So, we are, we are uh, in agreement. This is not a sort of a passive, you know. It, and the other thing is uh, uh, they glorified Gandhi as a passive, as if, you know, uh, a great thing is to do nothing. Uh, but the great thing is not to do nothing. I mean, especially in the Lokika world, in the Kurukshetra, you have to take action. Yeah, you have to. And I mean, this is the main teaching of Krishna, yeah. especially in Mahabharata. And we hear sometimes that is, you know, somebody slaps you on your left. Gandhi used to say that. He used you to quote turn Jesus. To, to quote the, but turn Krishna the right. says the other way around. If somebody slaps you on the left, he said you slap him on the right. Yeah. <laughs> so he will keep quiet, you know. Yeah. Because why why should you allow someone to slap you? We need the return of the Kshatriya yes. in this age. That's we really need, we, it's so important to cultivate good Kshatriyas and really empower them. Otherwise you get exploited. Kshatriya means Kshatat Trayata Iti Kshatriya. Kshatriya is, means one who gives you protection right. from the enemy. Right. And if you don't have that, you are bound to be exploited. Right. Good. Thank you very much. Welcome. Namaste. Thank you.